Joe presents Liquid Football, sponsored by Paddy Power. Hello, welcome to Liquid Football on Joe, together with Paddy Power. It's the show that takes you inside the dressing room and puts you in the boots of the players. Alongside me today, former Chelsea Reading and Fulham midfielder Steve Sidwell. And with us for a change this week, former Chelsea West Ham, Man City defender Wayne Bridge. How was your weekend? First of all, did you watch the cricket? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. How good was that? Brilliant. Unbelievable. S- superb. I mean, I, I was watching the football at the start and then obviously you could see it getting a bit more interesting, more interesting. You know, this is getting, the football got swept aside and the cricket was on. Ben Stokes. Wow. But that's uh, the thing. I don't think anybody watched it at the beginning because no. you lose a couple of early wickets. Yeah. You think, oh, it's fine. Well, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, I and don't then... really watch cricket, but now I know I've got to start watching it. Yeah. I was just with the kids having a beer and a, and a barbecue. But now what's gone on with the cricket recently, I've got to start watching it. Yeah, you've got to make sure you're tuned in, even if it looks like everything's lost. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen a sort of footballing performance that's as dominant as Ben so that he wasn't the only one who had a, who had a good innings but his was just yeah. ridiculous wasn't his it his partner Leach uh, put in a good performance yeah as well, exactly <laughs> Jack Leach one. three glasses for life <laughs> uh, I mean yeah in terms of football well um, I've been, I've been on the end of a, of a few uh, Spain kings I remember Luis Suarez uh, Liverpool versus Fulham when I was there uh, uh, Maxi Rodriguez actually scored a hat trick in that game, but Suarez stole the show, and uh, and the same actually happened as well when I was at Fulham for Chelsea against Chelsea. Hazard was absolutely sensational, and in that game as well, Scherler scored a hat trick, and all everyone was just raving about Hazard. So yeah. um, single handed I think he got, he got to the byline. One of them done the old like, the Rabona cross to the far stick for one of the goals as well. So at yeah. that stage, are you thinking? You just oh, want the whistle. Just yeah, you want the whistle. You, want the whistle. you want to get yeah. next next week's game. Yeah, or try or try and get close him, close enough to kick him. But even then, it was just impossible. <laughs> I've, that... I've probably seen a few um, being at Chelsea with you know Lampard, Drogba. I remember when Robin first come on the scene. It was just like Maradona just going past four or five players, just sticking it in the back of the net. But one that really sticks out for me was probably Bularuz. I don't know if you weren't there when... No, were you? no. Um, I come after. I took his number nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I took his number he, nine um, shirt. <laughs> he marked Ronaldinho out of the game and uh, he was absolutely unbelievable. Manager was bigging him up so much. But then I do remember a few games later, I remember now it was against Tottenham and he come off the bench and Robbie Keane turned him inside out a few times and the manager dragged him I back remember off. seeing that. Mourinho could be ruthless like that. Yeah. But the, when he was against Rodino that game, he was unbelievable. Um, but also for me, being a Southampton fan, Matt Letizia, 1998, England B team, scored a hat-trick, hit the crossbar, played unbelievable, still never made the England squad. Just couldn't believe it. Mind you, that might be the case with Ben Stokes of England. Don't go on to win, to win the Ashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it could be yeah, that it was yeah. all for nothing in yeah, the end. Yeah. But they have had that fantastic day. But like you said, Jack Leach, with, with his one run, yeah. his very significant one run, you know, it's... It, those kind of unsung performances are sometimes the ones that once the dust has settled, they're the ones that are almost a little bit even more enjoyable. You're yeah. impressed by the the sort of glamour and the and the excitement of the of the star, but at the same time, you, there's always a soft spot for the, yeah, the guy who's been there keeping it steady. Yeah, well, I think there was, a, there, well, there was a picture, wasn't there, after when they, he, he took him out back they onto the wicket, the pitch, yeah, yeah and, and, showed, and, sort of, and yeah. showed him exactly how he done it, a sort of a little run through, which you know, for all the players as well to go out there and sit down, and obviously there's some of them in their flip flops and that, and just chilling out, brilliant. But that's that's team spirit as well yeah. you get a lot of that he just must in, be loving in, life at the moment yeah it's, where he was, he was just um, cleaning his glasses after every bowl when he or something yeah. I, I read yeah just getting ready just setting himself up and cleaning up. his glasses the best <laughs> one was when Ben Stokes couldn't even watch it when he, he bowled I'm not even going to run I'm just going to watch I just hope that he just gets his back on it or wide he was he was just completely distracted and in his own yeah. his own kind of his own zone but that that sort of moment that they had together when they all go out onto the pitch and they're messing about and part Mm. of it was Jack Leach sort of showing them how he set up to score that one significant run that those moments after big games when you've had a really great performance when you've had a really great win how important is it that everybody's sort of together to spend that that time with each other I think it's really important team spirit you know the the foreign lads that come in to the team you know you want them to feel at home and I think I noticed it a lot at Chelsea. We had a lot of foreigners that come in. And whenever we had a good result, we'd all go out together, if we had a chance to go out, that is. Um, and cup finals, you know, everyone was together. It was not people going in different directions. We'd all go and have a night out together and stuff like that. So Isn't for it me, the case it often, important. though, at the end of, especially if it's, if it's a cup final at the end of the season, maybe not the, the League Cup, but, but maybe the FA Cup final or winning a league title, that the end of the season, you go out and, 
everybody's having a great time and the players are all exhausted. <laughs> they're the ones who are kind of, they're the, wow. they're the ones you sort like of find see a second sleeping. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. find <laughs> a second win, believe me. You're but on that, a high if you've that, got a medal. That starts literally straight after the game. The, the manager will come in, do his, um, his post-match uh, talk and as soon as he steps outside that door, the music's on, the stereo's loud and everyone's just talking, buzzing, what are we doing tonight, we're we going out, blah, blah, talking about the game, but not really taking it in yeah. so it's only sort of on that Sunday or the Monday a few days after we actually realised probably how well that you actually all played as a, as a team or as a unit or individually but but as soon as that manager starts, steps outside that door <laughs> that's it someone's like right ramp it up it's going I yeah. remember one game and I'm going to mention it because I scored and I don't score many <laughs> it was against um, Arsenal in the Champions League quarterfinals oh Highbury I oh, remember that it, it was unbelievable for me especially I don't <laughs> score many um I remember in the changing rafters, the atmosphere was unbelievable. Roman Abramovich come in, everyone was jumping up and down. And I just remember Adrian Moody go, want double bonus. And <laughs> Roman just nodded his head, goes, there you go, lads. But um, that was, that was a great time. Double bubble bonus. That's big yeah. for Champions League <laughs> as well. Yeah, mate, it's big. Our bonuses were big enough, believe me, we didn't need did it. Did he do it? He did do it, yeah, he did. Great for that as well. Yeah. Remember that? I played it to Ida once. Just closed two, my eyes and it is. Side foot. <laughs> yeah. and that was solid. Slot it in the corner. Yeah. So when you, when you go and if there's if there's been one of those big individual performances, you go back into the dressing room. Is it is it all is all the focus on that player, or do you kind of leave them to their own a bit, or is everybody over there? And yeah. it depends. I, what it is. Is. I think the focus that night was a little bit on me. Yeah. I um, don't know if I should say this story to be honest but we actually went out that night and I went from hero to zero in a space of about two hours we getting a lot of shots and I ended up just falling asleep after about two hours and carried home um, not the first time no no not the first time I was exhausted like you say you're exhausted you're drained dehydrated <coughs> Um, it's like so, a first yeah. night of the holiday kind of feeling isn't it you go out and you get really excited early yeah. on and get giddy and then you're like yeah I'm, I'm not going to last here yeah. Yeah. I did make it to training though so it depends yeah. it depends on the player though as well or the personality of the player I remember obviously the, the season that we got promoted with Brighton to the Premier League Anthony Knockhart was on absolute flames that season but and it was basically all around him you know when the music was up he was up on the beds in the mid uh, the, the, the massage beds dancing screaming shouting whereas others are a bit more placid when they've had a good game they just take it in their stride that was like an me, amazing yeah. season for him though wasn't it because is that his dad died in, in the middle of the yeah, season yeah do you know he? what it was one of them seasons where <clears throat> it was just it was just meant to happen from from the first game of the season to the end uh, there were turning points uh, I mean we, we played uh, uh, Birmingham uh, Glenn Murray scored a winning goal uh, the day we had our Christmas due so obviously that was obviously a good weekend but yeah Anthony lost his dad during that um, during that season you'd never see him play in the Premier League uh, and I think I scored that goal from the halfway line a couple of days after his dad passed away which obviously we credited obviously the goal to that and in, and and talk about team spirit we all flew out to uh, to what's well, they flew on the on the Eurostar to France for his dad's funeral and he was touched by that and just things like that all build up and that camaraderie that on, uh, on and off the p- field, it, 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 it gets you, what, 15, 20 points easily. Yeah, you do become like a family as well. But yeah. sometimes it's hard as well because you have that family, but then the next year, like, so many people could leave. It just changes. Yeah. Football, it changes so much. In terms of the going back to the, the cricket again and, and getting together and watching things, would there be big sports events? That one, I think, maybe would be less something that people would have planned to go and watch together because they kind of thought it had gone. But would there be big moments like boxing matches or cup finals or things like that that you would yeah. get together? Boxing, boxing's big. Boxing, I mean, I've been to golf. a few boxing with the yeah, lads. Yeah, darts. A lot of lads darts, go to the darts, especially lads, yeah, sort of darts. Christmas time as well. When they get, if they can get away with it in fancy dress as well, yeah. they'll uh, they'll do that. Oh, Golf's well, you a mean, massive one. You mean if actually you look go, in the crowd at darts, if going, there's somebody with like a, a like mascot head on or something, yeah, it could yeah, be someone in every disguise. Every chance it could be uh, <laughs> it could be a player. Yeah, underneath that, and I've, I've gone with the darts before in disguise. Um, in in disguise. Did you? Yeah. What did you go as? Yeah, where's Wally? <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a where's Wally one. Um, and yeah did anybody fine. spot you no no good nobody yeah, found, I've got, nobody saw where got, I've, got, I've yeah. got to cover the hair up that's the thing with me I just, I'm just i like a flashing beacon as soon as I walk through a door I was like that's Steve Sidwell or Ben Watson <laughs> did <laughs> anyone get other? spotted nah, it was, no there, were, there, was, there was only about sort of half a dozen of oh, us okay. um, but yeah I'd say definitely boxing's massive a lot, a lot of footballers love the boxing don't yeah. they yeah I've been to the boxing I've never really been into the the cricket or golf um, but boxing I've definitely been to but all the lads are massive on golf yeah. they love watching it there's always a sweepstake or a bet going on between the lads with the golf yeah 
Yeah. You know, big day for Ben Stokes. And Paddy Power offering a special price of 12 to 1 for Ben Stokes to go on and be top scorer in the first innings and for England to win the fourth test. Who knows how that one's going to turn out? We know to expect the unexpected as far as that concerns. Um, Chris Wilder gave an interview mm. this weekend where he was, effectively he was asked about, you know, the, the crowd's reaction and applauding his players off for effort. And he said, that's the bare He was very unimpressed. He said, that's yeah. the bare minimum. They didn't do anything else I asked them to, more or less. Yeah. I, I, I want them to go out and put effort in. Don't applaud them. If anything, they should have, they should be booing them. What do you think? Yeah, that, well, I, I can see his point and I agree with it. I mean, it's a, it's a standard given right that you should, you go out there and you just 100% commitment but we all go out obviously wanting to play well. Obviously, you don't play well every game. Some obviously passes could go astray. You don't score, don't shoot, whatever. But your work rate is a given. Um, and I think a lot of people, a lot of players get tarnished, don't they? With you know, like Berbatov's or players like that, that have they've just got that sort of lazy. Urzel's another one who looks yeah, relaxed. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. just their manner. That's just their approach into games. When they don't produce on the ball and their work rate isn't as well there off it, that's when it obviously becomes magnified. It is, it is a given, I think. I think when I was at Southampton, we definitely got applauded a lot sometimes for the effort we put in, but we were always the underdogs. And I think if it would have been worse if they never put the effort in and didn't play well, you know, they might have got booed off. But I understand where he's coming from. It sh- it, like you say, it's got to be a given that you get out and your work rate's there. You know, you do get that player like Matt Letizia who he played with at Southampton where... He was never going to run up and down, but you knew what he was good at. He was good on the ball, skillful, and he used to win games on his own. So there, there are certain players that aren't going to give you that work ethic. He, he would have told them as well after the game. Well, he, he, he told them in the interview. Yeah. He said it in the interview, Chris well, Wilder. He said, you didn't do what I asked you to yeah, do. Yeah, I think that was a PG version of, yeah. of probably what he said <laughs> in the changing room. What changing happened in the changing yeah. room. Yeah, yeah they, they would have got the full, full hairdryer treatment. But that seeing a manager criticising players publicly is so unusual. You very rarely get it. Normally, you have managers coming out trying to find the positives, mm. trying to big their players up. So have you ever had a manager go out and publicly have a go at, at players? Uh, I think I think the now the modern day manager is all about massage and egos and, and man management. And they've got to be very careful of how they do that as a collective and individuals. Um, so you don't see it ha- happen very often now. Whereas five, ten years ago, I think it was it was routine. Yeah. If they didn't perform, I mean, I remember a, a Reading game when I was just coming through. When Reading bought me, I think I was only about twenty at the time. We had, it was my first game actually, my debut against Leicester. We was three 0 down at half time. Alan Pardew come in, and uh, in the dressing room there was like a little sort of doctor's trolley where all the strappings are and, and tape. He booted that. That went up the wall. Literally got it. He sort of booted it first. It went up the wall, came back down. Then he got it, and then he threw it across the other side of the room. <laughs> so straight away, that sets the tone. Then you're like, then you like did, that. Did you get from that that he was a bit annoyed? <laughs> well, that, I, I'm thinking that I'm literally just coming to Reading from Arsenal, sort of Arsene Wenger, sort of very calm, placid, into sort of this trolley being thrown across the dressing room. I was like, straight away, I was just like, oh my god, what is this? But set the tone, yeah. and then I, I, I can't remember the score. We didn't, we didn't come back and win, but. We won the next game. We, we had Burnley away and we put in a top class performance one away from home. But Pards was, he could lose it. Yeah. He could lose it. But that was that was behind closed doors. But yeah. publicly? No, I don't think publicly. Like, even Mourinho, I've seen him like batter people in the dressing room. I just think when you're in the dressing room, you take it on the chin and you get on with it. And I don't, he would, he was always there for the players. I think he'd always stick up for you in the press unless you really done something to annoy him or, or anything like that, upset him. Um, I think in the changing room, Gordon Strachan, he was a fiery character. He used to kick stuff, throw stuff all the time. But again, in publicly, I don't think he would ever do anything to anyone mm. or out anyone in public. How, how do you think you'd react if, you, if you're sitting watching a manager and oh, suddenly I'd be going... pissed right off if it was in public, <laughs> yeah. 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 I know if I've played a bad game and if the manager has a go at me, I'll hold my hands up and, you know, there's no need to... I know if I play bad and I'm probably... And that, those are the games which stick in my head more than anything. I yeah. think about the bad things I've done more than the good things. I think if it's done in public, it, it's more of a personal issue between the yeah. manager and the player. I think is there, it would be yeah. an ongoing scenario where he's, he's not having him or he wants him out the, out yeah. the team or at the club. I've um, had it with Mancini. He said stuff about me um, publicly. So you, you do get it. I just I was out of favour at the time, and he'd say, "Oh, I'm not interested in playing football. I'm off playing golf and stuff." But 
you know, that's not. I didn't even play golf till I finished finished <laughs> football, so that was wrong. I used to meet the lads at the nineteenth hole, so I never, I never played <laughs> oh, golf. So you, so. Don't try and argue with us that no. playing playing <laughs> golf is less of an issue than you going out so and doing the job. Yeah. 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 We did have a yeah. day off the next day, though. But it was like I was playing golf every day. That was not happening, by the way. Um, but yeah, he outed me in public, and there was no need for it because I think you know me. I'll always get my head down and work. Oh. I would never cause a problem for the manager or anything like that. Yeah, that, that yeah. idea. There are it. players like Addy Burrell used to come in and just say I'm injured and walk out. Like he just didn't care. The manager had had enough of him, didn't want him around. He was never playing, so he'd walk in to the field, say I'm injured, I'm going home. But like, they're the type of players so what, I think you have to treat in a certain way. I think yeah. I was always respectful and always kept my head down. I've, I've not really been in clubs where a team where that sort of happened. What, how, did, how did you feel well, then as a player? With, with, if your teammates come in going in, like you know he's fit and he's coming saying, I'm oh, ankle sore, you know, that's me done, I'm going to go home. You, like, it's, compared it's, to you, your work ethic, your yeah, work rate, your one, your head's down. I think what annoyed me was he was going to do what he was going to do. That That's just the way Addy was. Yeah. Addy wanted out, the manager didn't want him. Um, but what annoyed me was, don't treat me like I'm Addy, because at the yeah. end of the day, I kept my nut down. If you wanted me to train with the kids, I trained with the kids. I never kicked up a fuss. I just kept my head down. And, you know, there are players that do keep up a fuss. I think you, you know, I th- I think really he didn't treat me the respect I deserved. No. But you weren't, you weren't annoyed with, a, you know, a teammate just sort of going, yeah, I don't fancy it today. I'm I think... A bit sore, I'm off. I think to you the can, pole. but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think you you can try and talk to Eddie, and people did try and talk to him, but he was he was a strong character. But also, I think it's more if there's for me, I notice it. I would have a go at a player if it's you're on the pitch and they're not putting the effort in. Mm. If someone's going to do that off the pitch, I'm a bit like you. Might, I would just wash my hands of them and yeah. I'm done, unless they're Messi or Ronaldo or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. But I am pretty just wash your hands of them. That that's their attitude. So I don't really like that attitude. You're not giving me the impression that you'd have taken too kindly to that. No, well, I mean, we're sort of cut from the same cloth, you know. I, I just go on Bridgie there. I've, he's probably one of the best that I've worked with in terms of training, fitness, uh, getting his head down, even when he might be performing bad on the weekends and that. I'd be times in training. I mean, when I was at Chelsea, I'd be coming in, have breakfast, go down to the gym at sort of half nine. He was on the bike. He was on, he was on a treadmill with obviously his phone or an iPad watching like, I don't know, whatever series it was yeah. at the time. And I'd walk over there and it'd be like an hour and 10 minutes into it and he's still going. This is before training. And it, it, he just had that work ethic where... I think, yeah, I had to work on my fitness because I was never as skillful as the other players. So I had to stay fit. <laughs> nah, but, 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 but what, yeah. what is the thinking behind it? If you, you know, obviously there's a, there's a, personal pride thing in there but when you're training like you said putting in over an hour of extra fitness stuff in before training what is it that that drives you to do that i think i've i've been i've always kept myself fit from a young age and i think gordon strachan when he was at southampton our team was so fit like we would all be running over 13k a game and some would be running up to 15 so i think i've probably carried it on from that and sometimes even i used to go away of england we used to train and i used to think i haven't done anything I thought I need. I want to do more. I want to like work harder. So I think it's it's probably come from my days at Southampton where we worked extra hard. And obviously, I guess at the bigger teams, there's so much ability. And I don't know if players are probably don't have to work like I work. But I I always thought I was a little bit fitter than most. I thought I could get up and down yeah. more than most people. So you know that was that was part of my game really. So I probably done it because it was part of my game. I suppose you see with Gordon Strachan that it prolonged his career keeping really fit towards the end and he had a oh, yeah he no? used to draw, he used to join in all the time yeah. in training <laughs> yeah. but there's a couple of lads I remember Chris Mars then he used to get the arm and he used to try and smash him all the time. So there's a few rows between yeah. them two. <laughs> but he's still fit now. Still fit now. I try to. I try to. Yeah. All the shows that he's done. I mean, he's f- absolute machine. This man. I, I miss it. I think I miss. I miss the day to day. When I retired, um, I think I was ready to retire. Although it's due to injury, but I think after a year, I miss it. I miss the the routine and keeping fit. Yeah. And I, I mentioned fit. on one of the earlier shows that I miss the the pain. You know that sort of the you only know, get home at like yeah. the weight game two o'clock in the morning. The stiffness. It's a weird. Yeah. It's a weird, kind I, I of weird thing to it. say. It. it, it it's mentally it's good for you I think and you know I hated ice baths but you know you'd work hard your legs would feel sore you'd jump in an ice bath it was horrible you'd feel so good afterwards mm. I, I miss it loads do you miss playing I mean you're talking about the same when we had this this conversation before you're talking about the bits that people would think 
would be the stuff you have to go through yeah. in order to get to play. Yeah. So do you miss playing? I am I definitely miss playing and I think... I'm still playing. Yeah. I, play, I play in a Vets team. We, uh, we're actually, we won the Surrey Cup. So oh, don't, sorry, just shoe on that end. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't play in a league. We literally just play in a cup and we won the Surrey Cup this year. And the funniest thing was, in our team, to be fair, it's quite a young Vets team. There was me, uh, Graham Stack was in there, Ben Chorley was in there, uh, Nicky Forster, and we got to the final and we played... Sean Davis was in this team, <laughs> uh, Kevin Watson, Barry Howes, Jamie Lawrence. So it was like basically like an ex uh, Premier League yeah. sort of uh, talent on show. But we won, we won one nil, but I love it. That'll still get the buzz. But it was so funny when you turn up to some of these games and you can hear the whispers, Steve, like they're standing there with a fag at their yeah. mouth. And I'm sure that's Steve Sidwell there. Don't <laughs> you know or Ben Watson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, do you, you still play a little bit don't you <laughs> not a lot I, p I play a little bit I find it really frustrating because I can't do what I used to do my knees my knees quite bad so I'm all right in straight lines but <laughs> if I'm trying to defend and someone changes direction I'm lost you know I, I've heard I've heard where I've played in some charity games and people are like oh, Wayne Bridge isn't very good is he <laughs> and I'm a bit like mate my knees really bad <laughs> like so I find it really frustrating because I want to do the stuff I used to do and I can't. I'd love to still be playing like you do yeah. with the vets, but I just couldn't do it. I can't walk for a week afterwards from from football. You know, running a straight line is so different from yeah, playing football. Yeah, team, it's, yeah, it's so different. Is it is it different as well when you're playing a, a vets team, playing with people who've played at Premier League level and playing with people who oh, haven't yeah. played at that level? Is it, is it, oh, and is it an understanding different. thing rather than a physical Yeah, you thing? know you know that you can't play certain passes because you're <laughs> and every pass that you make, you're thinking, this is either going to go under his foot, over his foot, yeah. it's either going to bobble up and hit his knee. Um, but you just got to accept that, you know, I, and, and it's fun. It's, it, it is fun. It is fun. I've been in those games where... You, you accept it and get on with it but yeah. when you start losing if yeah. you go two yeah. three nil down for me it becomes really frustrating <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm a, and I can't do it on my own I've, I've been in with Joe Cole and he's played and he can do it on his own um, but I, I can find it quite frustrating when you go three nil down they look at me and go come on go score a yeah. goal and I'm like I yeah. can't do it anymore <laughs> them games that we've played in before in that, in that cage in the five or side where we just to give it to Joe yeah. yeah, give it to Joe. Let him just go and do it. He's still, yeah. he's still got magic in his feet. Yes, he have you ever retired. got frustrated? Do you think when, when you've when you've been? Have you ever? I know you say you got. Have you ever balled anyone out? Who's no, there? And you're just I, thinking, I don't. I don't think I'd do that. No, because they probably never, just slate me back. To be yeah. honest, you must have been no tempted hope. though. No. <laughs> come on. No, no, no I've, I I've never. I, I never done that. Even in sort of during my career, really. No. Dug people I, out. Yeah, I, I, don't, I never did. No. You see players that do do it. I just think. If you dug me out, I'm a bit like, I know I've had a bad game, mate. You don't need to tell me. I know I've made a mistake. I don't need telling. Yeah. I'm a bit like that. Yeah. I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't do it then and after. You just, you sort of get more of a softer side. Yeah. I suppose. Um, given that you both still play a little bit <laughs> successfully in the, in, in, the, in the Surrey Cup, as far as you're concerned, um, you are listening to Liquid Football on Joe together with Paddy Power, Steve Sedwell and Wayne Bridge with me today. Steve, it's your favourite part of the show. And we thought, given, you know, you're both keeping your, keeping your hand in is probably the wrong expression as far as this is concerned, but the Paddy Power Challenge for the chance to win £250 plus a £250 bet. Um, what charity are you going to back this week? Your NSPCC, aren't yes. you sticking with that one? Yeah, I'll stick with that one this week, yep. And I'm when? going for the Mind Charity, okay. uh, Mental Health Charity, my missus is an ambassador of, so going for that one. Perfect, that makes sense. So we set the guys a headers challenge. We're going to be getting members of the public to head it backwards and forwards with us. Whoever gets the longest rally wins. Let's go, Geese. Let's go. One, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven, seven Eight, nine, ten, ten eleven, twelve. Good work, Effie. Oh. That's good work, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, sorry. Seven. Unlucky, no mate. good. Really, mate. Unlucky. So, what's your name? Anita. 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 Yeah. Are you any good? Yeah. Uh, not really. Okay. See what we're happens. Yes. We're going. It's easy. You just dead it up. Yep. Here we go. One. One. Two. Oh. Move your feet. Move your feet. Oh, I'm lucky. It's my bad. It's my bad. You fancy heading challenge? Does anyone want to really help Wayne Bridge with a heading challenge? Oh, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> I'm not that desperate, mate. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm good lucky. try. Good try. Thank you. Good sport. So Cheers. Lucky. Thank That's you so right. much. Thank you. What's your name? Oscar. Oscar. Here we go. Heading challenge. Me oh, and you. I'm Put your shopping down. One, One, two, three, four, five. 
Oh, unlucky, five. mate. Never mind. Five, unlucky. Well try. done. Well done. Oh, yeah. Well. Right, I love that, mate. Up the chair. Go on. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah, there's a sun in your eyes. You're all right, yeah. Are you ready? I hope he's in his eyes. One, two, three. Go on, hit it again. Four, five, six, seven, eleven. Drop it! Seventeen. Go on, hit again. Eighteen. Ah! Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Good effort. Yes! Taking the lead with that, mate. Love that. <laughs> Twenty-one. Love that. Get in. Any good at heading? Keep the hat on, let's go, let's do this. One, Favour returned. Two, three, four, four, five, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, oh! 15, 15 16, 16, oh! 15, 17. <laughs> to be fair, that wasn't bad, that wasn't bad, mate. Do you fancy a heading challenge, mate? Oh, no, no? All right. Yeah, you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Have a good day, guys. Cheers. Oh, you have a great day. One, two, three, four. Five, 19, 20, 21. Oh, <laughs> so no! Close. Mate, decent, well Love done, mate. That. Oh, that's a blow. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, who's up for a heading challenge? Who's up? Is he We're decent? 21. 21. Tw 21. One, two, three, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, drop it! 21, 28, 29, it's getting boring. Oh, no! 29. Mate, 29. you've got to beat your mate, surely. Yeah. Is he any good? Yeah, right, oh, yeah! 29 is the record. Let's go, geese. 1, 2, 3, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Oh, no! Oh, no! Yeah. <laughs> all over! It's all over! Yeah. <laughs> Bridget, you absolutely nailed that one. 50 p had come good geese, didn't it? Hey, that last header was decent. Yeah. What was the record? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you won, that's all that matters. <laughs> Love that. Football's the winner. <laughs> so Wayne is the winner with 42, well, 21 of them are yours, but 42 <laughs> headers yeah, yeah. between the pair of you. Can't believe, you can't believe a 50 p had won it. It's my worst I attribute, my head in. <laughs> I thought we, we, we met some shockers out there, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did, to um, be fair. All good, all what? good though, for, for in game and confident for doing it. What about the girl who wouldn't move her feet? Oh, she just, <laughs> she was just expecting me to literally land it on her head every time, and she just wanted to just do this every time. I, like, I need a bit more help. Yeah, but, it was uh, good fun. It was I good thought fun. I had it at the end, and then trick shot. Yeah, Bridgie here turned up and uh, and, and stole Threw it off me. A couple of backward headers in there. Yeah, unlike me, that. Well, yeah. Well, you say you say you say a couple of headers, but only one of them was yours. So yeah, you yeah, the backwards right. headers. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you are listening online, then you can watch that at joe.co.uk, or you can watch it on the YouTube channel as well, and you can see how they got on. Um, who are you going to put your two hundred and fifty pound bet on? Well, I had a little discussion with Sidney, and I was thinking Norwich, good odds, thirteen to five. They've been playing well, scoring goals up against West Ham, so I'm going to go for them. Mm. It's not a bad shout, actually. I think it's a good shout there. Yeah. I, was, I was impressed with them even on the weekend against yeah. Chelsea. I thought they played some really good football at times, but they're looking like they've uh, took to the Premier League like duck to water. You might be the first person to actually be Fingers able to crossed. have a winning bet on this because nobody's win win managed it yet. Well so you and John have not done <laughs> no. well on this. Far off. Um, from this weekend, David Luiz gave away a penalty against Liverpool, pulling on Mo Salah's shirt. I mean, we could talk about his comments about it being um, the force I mean, the force wasn't really there yeah. and Mo Salah apparently said to, to Louise that he didn't even feel him tug on his shirt because yeah. it was so slight and that's why he didn't go down. We could talk about that or we could talk about the fact he said it was a reflex. Yeah. Is that a reflex? I, I was just literally uh, couldn't believe he had said it, to be honest. <laughs> I literally thought, what an idiot yeah. coming out with that comment. It's just his face after, like the expression, like, like what? It wasn't me. Like, it was blatant, anything. it wasn't a reflex. No, of course not. And, of course but, not. Is it, is was, it a reflex to go and pull on somebody's shirt if they're no. getting away from you? I don't no. think you could blame anything on a reflex. And I was literally battering him. And then... I did go back to the cup <laughs> final I played against Tottenham with Chelsea and we actually lost. And I gave away a handball. And if you watch it back, it is so bad. <laughs> but I was saying, no, it's ball to hand. And I watched it so back, the ball was literally just sat there. And the, my reflex, so there, <laughs> yeah. I just slapped it away like that. <laughs> it was embarrassing, to be honest. And I think more would have been said about it in that cup final. But we managed to get it back to 1-1 and uh, they scored in extra time. But... I, I feel... I, it, mine was definitely a reflex. That definitely wasn't a yeah. reflex. <laughs> no way. You make an excuse for yourself, but no, not, yeah, not for David no, 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 no. That was, that was just too... I think that was sloppy defending, yeah. lazy defending. He's yeah. got him behind him too easy. Yeah, he was sloppy in that game all round, yeah. wasn't he? But I think defenders, they got a different sort of mindset, really, to, to attackers. I, I, I would... Ex 
you could say maybe from an attacker's point of view, yes, reflexes, but from defenders, their mindset is yeah. sort of solely on defending and the basics of defending. And you, basically, he's let his runner go lazy. He let his runner go. He tried to pull yeah. him back. And and a, a blatant one as well. And I'll then tell you one the thing I wouldn't after. do is, though, is come out, and I gave it a pound, I wouldn't come out and say it was just a reflex. Yeah. I know it, it probably was, but you shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't have done that. Um, and for him to come out and say that, I just think it's an embarrassment. Yeah, well, he's, mu- he's, he's sort of mugging himself off yeah. and Arsenal fans as well there just to come out and take it on the chin just say look I, we've all made load of mistakes Lo- I remember one at Aston Villa it was my actual my home debut at Aston Villa against Middlesbrough they went 1-0 up I scored the equaliser was having a great game I think five minutes to go I've literally was it Tunkai their, their, stri- their striker yeah, yeah, I yeah. literally I was on the edge of my own box I've literally just put him in went to play a back pass and just sort of flicked it with the outside of my foot to back to the keeper he went on to it stuck it in the back of the net but you, when when you do that, what's going what's going through your head? You look at maybe even you could maybe make a comparison with Adrian last week. Yeah, you you know you 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 kick the ball and you think, do you just not see the player coming in? Is it just your mind's elsewhere? What is it? It's it? one of them it's same sort of thing. When I, just, just, I could explain. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. Like, like, well, you watch, I, I could watch now. I can say I don't. I just don't know what I was doing. It, like, it, was, it, it was as though I literally yeah. played for Middlesbrough and I was like there you go it was that bad was he in your fantasy team? it's like it's simple ones like the ball comes to you and it goes out of play for a throw in yeah do you know it, it does happen and but the big ones though you want the big the, ones the few yeah, ones, they're you horrible you just want to just, just hide you just want to be swallowed yeah. up especially if it leads to a goal and you lose a game and you just want to get you just want to get onto the next game and, and play well. Yeah. What are you you're like thinking is everyone talking mentally about mentally the peri- well that's how long does that last? I, t- I think it depends. It depends, then I think it's how the manager is with you. Um, but again, you take it on a chin if he says it. And I think sometimes the lads will get round you and G you up a little yeah. bit. And I around think when you. It, yeah, around you, they just around stare. You, yeah. But when they get home or someone else says, oh, what about that player? What's he thinking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he's actually behind killed your us. Back. He's yeah. actually yeah. killed us. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I'm just waiting for, I'm just get training Monday, get into the next game and try and forget about it. Mm. Sometimes it ain't easy. You no. said that, that players go straight on Twitter. After the games, a lot of yeah. get on the team bus. Would, is that a case where you'd, you'd stay off, <laughs> or would you be That's, on just to I check how badly people? I never got on Twitter or anything like that, yeah. or, or social media while yeah, I was playing. They, they still go. They, I think. It, but good but or what bad. Steve and John was saying was everybody will tell you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it's. I just I try not to read anything to no. be honest. Try not to read. I try not to look if I've had a six, a seven, or an eight. If I've played well, I might have a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I try not to look at t- at all because I think someone is always going to slate you no matter what. Yeah, of course. So, um, obviously, Louise making the move from from Chelsea. They got their first three points. Yeah. under Frank Lampard, the youngest team in twenty five years. Is that is that a positive thing? There's there's a lot of pressure on them a lot of pressure to take as a young kid but sometimes I think it's easier as a young kid mm. I think you go in and you just take it in your stride yeah so I, I think yeah I think sometimes they'd be it's nervous easier. you'd be nervous, nervous anxious but, but like but positive once the whistle nerves. goes he just play football yeah. we won't be thinking about anything I think yeah but, and also as well in that's in I think in that sort of scenario that Chelsea are in even with the senior pros they know that they've got to get round them because they, they can't get play, other players in so they know that what they've got in that dressing room they've got to deal with whereas when we was probably coming through it was a different sort of story, really. How do the the older players test them then to see if they can cope? How did they do it? In, how did they do it? What, back in, in the in day, your day, back in, your back day. in the first <laughs> few years, I think you you get tested a lot. But I think yeah. when I turned senior players, I think everything changed a little bit because as a kid, we used well, I used to clean boots. Yeah, we used to clean the showers, the yeah. toilets. Yeah. We used to do everything. Yeah, you had to earn your stripes. I yeah, you clean boots, but you clean but you clean the showers and we the toilets. Used to clean well. the showers toilets everything yeah. doors they used to come along and wipe their finger across doors there was dust we'd be out running so it it kind of taught you a bit of work ethic and a bit of discipline but I think also I don't know if it's my character I think everyone I was, I was with was kind of respectful of yeah. the first team but you were around them as well I don't think they're around them as much anymore no you like, I remember kind of being at Arsenal you was buzzing if, if one of the first team players spoke to you it, it, and that, that's not just at Arsenal. That's, that was any level. If you walk down the corridor, you wouldn't. You'd put your head down 
And if they spoke to you, you'd, you'd say hello to them. And yeah. then you'd, you'd, you'd go back in the dressing room, you'd go, I just spoke to Dennis Berry. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. like, he'd be like, I talked to Tierra. Yeah. And he'd be like, no way, what did he say? <laughs> yeah. um, it's, but it's, some of them are brutal. Some of yeah, the old, some of the old I think, school ones. I remember just like, Christmas bonuses and stuff. Yeah. And you had to do something to get it, whether it be a dance yeah. or someone would just give you the money, but some people would make you do stuff. And I think when it was your birthday, something would always happen to you as well. Um but making I think that's changed. Just do making teas. You making teas, teas on the bus. bus. Yeah, when I first started playing, um, if, you had to make if all you the go teas. from one, well, Southampton to anywhere, yeah. it was and it was a one of them distance. as well. They knew what they were doing. You'd, anyone want a tea? No. So you'd make one, and then you'd finish, and they'd go, oh, "I'll have one actually," yeah. and oh. you were just up and down constantly. Yeah. But I remember seeing on that subject an interview with Thomas Tuchel who talked about when he was working with, with youth and the kids he said I used to fight all the time I wanted them on the same coaches or same types of coaches of the first team I wanted them on perfect pitches and he went actually I don't think I did them any favours by doing that I think you need to learn to overcome hurdles mm. in order to in order to get better if you never learn any if you never learn yep. to overcome anything it's, it's no good to you well that's where the loan system comes in for me which is a uh, is it, it, it works brilliantly for me. I went from Arsenal out to Brentford. Where What sort of, age was that? I was just turned 18. Was you nervous going to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I, I could imagine like, I You could imagine been. a League 2 yeah. Brentford team then. I made my better debut against Berry at home. Uh, scared, nervous, worried about obviously what the, sort of the, the, the older senior players were going to sort of be shouting at me. Um, but you just sort of get used to it Probably and, grow and a I bit grew, I grew it, up yeah. so much not just in terms of football terms but even off the pitch I mean the best shower in that training ground was a, a hose <laughs> that come out of a, 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 a lot of hot tap and it just went out all the others were cold you had to take your, your um, training kit home to wash and it's just a massive level playing field just, it, it takes you literally from there coming from my personal point of view from Arsenal, heated floors, flip, um, flip flops your training kit's all laid out for you no problems to right you're one of us now and this is how we work. This is how it goes on here. You need to muck in. And you've, you're playing with players who need their bonuses in order to pay their mortgages. They're reliant on the money. Yeah. It's not, you know, you're not talking about players who are on Premier League wages. You're yeah. talking about players who are, are playing for their, their livelihood. So yeah. the, the expectation and the pressure on you is, yeah. is different then, isn't it? Yeah, massively, yeah. I think that's what's great as a kid when, well, when we started was we were on next to nothing. Mm. And I think there is something to work for. You want you want to get to that next step. Next, I think some of the kids are on big contracts and they might think they made it. I think it's great to be yeah. battling for your bonuses or the next step or, or something like that. I think you need that as a kid. Where did you, when you made your debut yeah. for Brentford yeah. against Berry? what, and you talk about being worried about what the, the mm. senior pros might say to you. What was, what was that like? How much do you remember of it? About, you, first of all, you're in an alien environment Anyway, you've been yeah. brought up in, in one set of circumstances and you're now playing in a very different set of circumstances. Yeah. To be fair, I, I actually fitted in really well. My, <laughs> my first game, my first game uh, they played, I, I literally found out on the Friday, um, Arsene Wenger pulled me in and said, look, we're going to send you out on loan. Steve Koppel, here's his number, he's the manager. He's going to give you a call. You're going to be involved tomorrow. So got in the car, this was on the Friday. I spoke to Steve Koppel and he said, look, you're not going to be playing tomorrow. We've got a Bournemouth away, but I want you to come to experience it. We got, you're going to play Tuesday in midweek. No problem. He, so, uh, he said, we're leaving uh, Griffin Park at whatever time it was, I can't remember, to get to Bournemouth, eight o'clock, for instance. So obviously I'm new, like, sort of still new to probably driving as well. My mum and dad, we've got that sort of a, a map out, an A to Z map, right? You go this way. This way. There's no, there's no sat nav or anything like that then. So I'm following the, so I've got there. He said, get there early. And I said, get there early. And then, you know, you can just relax. I've probably got there about seven o'clock. <laughs> So I'm outside Griffin Park in my little Volkswagen Polo. I've sort of gone to sleep a little bit. And all of a sudden I've seen a minibus go past with like heads in it. I'm thinking, shit, I've missed the bus. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, I've missed the bus. What am I going to do? I've come out, got into, got into uh, Griffin, uh, into, the, into the stadium. And uh, Wally Downs was in the shower, the assistant coach. And I've gone, I'm Steve said, well, was that, was that the bus? He's going, sit down, kid. He said, we're not leaving for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but when the lads found it out as well they were just cracking up as well so it was like it, it was a nice little icebreaker um, but there was times where I had a few rollickings by them sort of saying look you're not fucking at Arsenal now you know this is different this is proper men's football so uh, a lot of up and downs but brilliant brilliant um, experience did you get thrown in at the deep end? well my, I didn't even expect to be on the bench for my debut, um, but I was on the bench first game of the season against Liverpool 
and Beresford got injured after six minutes and I came on at left wing. Um, for me, playing left wing for Southampton, it was it was hard because in terms of cementing my place, my end product in terms of scoring goals uh, wasn't great from left wing, <laughs> hence why I got moved back. <laughs> um, so I was kind of in and out of the team and there was times where... I had played, but where I didn't play every game, there was times in the man I would stay, stay out of the dressing room because I didn't feel like part of the team. But Dave Jones used to always drag me in and um, he ended up moving me to left back. And thank God he did that, to be honest, because then I kind of cemented my place in the team and I felt really felt like part of the team. Um, but playing it when I first started, I found it hard to feel like, feel like I was really part of it. Yeah, but just that... that- Wanted to be accepted more than anything. Yeah, and, and, feel like, I, I and to was, feel like a first team. But won't, do you remember the? Was there a moment, or was it like a gradual process of when you suddenly went? No, I'm, I'm a, I'm a first team player now. That's I that's think who it I was. Am. It was literally moving to left back, and then I, then I started playing, and then I think Glenn Hoddle came in afterwards, and he absolutely loved me, and I was playing every game. I played like 113 consecutive games, so you know I was cemented. Then I played for England, so. At the beginning, I was so nervous. I was a nervous, nervous kid anyway. I used to get butterflies in my stomach before before every game. And I think going to left back and the manager showing so much confidence in me after I started playing left back, just it gave me so much more confidence. And it's one thing, I went to a, an event and Glenn Hoddle was there and he picked up on it. He said, when I first come to the club, he said, this kid was lacking in too much confidence. And... It was well, I got the players around him to give him the confidence, and you know, yeah, I, I appreciate everything they've done for me. To be honest, because otherwise I wouldn't have gone on to where I would have been. You're listening to Liquid Football from Joe uh, together with Paddy Power. There will be a new episode of House of Rugby out tomorrow evening. James Haskell and Mike Tyndall are part of that. I'm sure we'll hear all about Haskell signing to fight up as a mixed martial artist, which is quite a change. You've had a go at boxing, haven't you, Wayne? Yeah, I have. But to go professional, I just is yeah. I hope he's done done some of it before. Well, what would you what would you say to him? What does he need to What does he need to look out for? <sighs> so I get, don't get advice from me. <laughs> <laughs> I probably say, you know mine was for charity. So you know whoever I was going to fight, I think one the first guy I fought had a couple of fights before, so he's not professional. And then obviously it was Spencer Matthews. But I did notice in my training for the comic relief, I went to proper sparring. And sparring is, it ain't no, this take it easy. They, they're they obviously better than me. And how hard I'm hitting them, they step up. And the guy was training me, Sam, he took me to some gyms to make where I'm going to be uncomfortable. So everyone who goes there all the week and there's loads of people watching and I'm getting in with a guy who wants to not go pro, but he's amateur. Mm. They know what they're doing. Mm. My first sparring session... I've hit him a few times, but when he's hitting me, I'm thinking he's got bricks in his glove. And he literally <laughs> gave me a hook and my eardrum just popped. And like, I was thinking, I didn't really know what had happened at first. And I was trying to clear my ears and it was just, I could just feel it, it, air coming out. Mm. So from then on, my, I had to put cotton wool in my ears to stop like the, the air basically bursting my eardrum. But I used to come out with headaches, um, both kids' parties had two black eyes, um, so it's it's not a it's not a pretty pretty. I take my hat to the people that go and do it, but to go professional, I'm a bit. I just think he's absolutely crazy. To be honest, <laughs> I think he's got a little bit of a screw loose, <laughs> unless he's done a bit before. You know, there's the grappling. Yeah, there's I'm everything involved I mean, you've in it. You got knees. You got yeah, people, you got I'm. Mean, I'd never have a go at it. No, no, cha- not even no. for charity. To be no. honest, no. no even I boxing is one thing. Going to boxing, yeah. throwing a punch, but it's throwing a punch while you're getting punched as well. That's that's the bit that, and you're getting punched hard. I mean, when you was, when you were sparring and you was hitting him, I mean, was were they, were they wincing at all? Were they just literally just taking well, shots? And you're thinking, I've given my best shot here. <laughs> <didn't know> yeah, <laughs> afterwards, he did say, "E, it's bloody hard." <laughs> oh, but really? then. The, the people I was, they were like, they were going off me. So they're obviously better than me. So they're taking up a notch. Yeah. So he never even went to his full full potential, yeah. really. He was just stepping it up with me. And there is times, and you're, they're like, I was doing three minute rounds. And you're going in, you're a min, you think you're three minutes in, you're a minute in. You think the 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 bells and going, he shouts out two minutes to go. And yeah. I'm just like, I always want to get out of the ring now. Yeah. I think I've been hit enough. <laughs> no. it's, it, it ain't. 
it's so hard what they do. Yeah, it's and not it's not the punching, it's the taking them. Fight. Sparring yeah. ain't this take it. Don't get me wrong, you could probably do light sparring. Yeah. But this, he was putting me in for a fight. He said, this is a fight, this isn't no sparring. I just... Good luck, James. Yeah, <laughs> brave, you man. are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked uh, Chris Wilder a bit earlier on and how he reacted after that defeat by, by Leicester. One of the other notable points of that was that Jamie Vardy, Wednesday fan, in front of the cop at Bramall Lane, scoring and celebrating the hands behind the ears and yeah. giving it the full. I, I, I like seeing players celebrate. Yeah. I'm, I'm not for this. I don't even think if it's a team you've played 400 times for and you play one appearance for a new guy, I'm like, I, yeah. I think celebrate. I Just a, nobody cares what I think, but that's what yeah. I think. However, was there, was there one team that you always liked to beat? Was there one team that you wanted to play against? Um, funnily enough, it was Arsenal. Not in, in, and I say that it wasn't a case of right. Well, they let me go, and I just I wanted to show them what they was missing, or I was pissed off with them for releasing me. Things like that. it wasn't that case at all. It was just a, it was just that I always seemed to play well against them, and I used to get a lot of stick as well from the fans. And a lot of the fans used to know me as well because obviously we had such a good youth team and and, and being in and around the reserves and, and first team, but always played well against them and, and, and scored quite a few goals against Arsenal as well. And I remember once uh, at Fulham when me and Bobby Zamora scored quite late on. I think it was the same one where Arsenal. Do you remember the, the the video where he couldn't keep missing his hands, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> missing his pockets? <laughs> I think it, Bobby Z just literally put away in the back, in the back of the net. And Arsenal was trying to find his blood. <laughs> he's doing all this. But yeah, always just seemed to score against Arsenal. Got a bit of stick from their fans as well. Which I is think a if you're getting poor. stick, it means a bit more yeah. as well. It's poor from them, yeah. but it means And I always celebrate as well. All these ones where don't celebrate against the former club. If you score against them, they just sort of like... Oh no! You should. To you, be fair, yeah. I wouldn't if I scored against Southampton. To be fair, did you not? Did you not? <laughs> but I grew up supporting them, and, yeah. and so that's a bit different. Yeah, did mixed, you, mixed did you score? Oh, mate, I hardly ever scored, um, but one that stands out for me, Pompey. Obviously, being a Southampton fan, Pompey, they hated me. Yeah, I remember our first game reserves against them. Yeah, they the goalkeeper had a spare pair of gloves in the goal, and someone jumped on and set a light to them. Just just went up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't believe it. They, I know they hate both teams, hate each other, but I've always thought right, Pompey could literally overstep the mark at any time. But I remember playing. Uh, for Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, I just got slated the whole game, and I played, and I played alongside their fans as well, which was horrible because it was constant. Yeah. But all that's going through my head was, don't make a mistake, don't make any mistakes, because I'm just going to get slated even more. But it was nil nil, and I managed to score a goal. I don't score many, and I literally ran across the whole pitch. <laughs> but as I got up close to them, I had my hands like this behind my ears, and then they were literally trying to punch me. I was so close to him. I have to watch it back. Joe Cole literally jumps on me and pulls me back because <laughs> I was literally right up against them. But that night, um, I was back home and someone they must someone must have given my number out. I know a few Pombi people. That I don't know if they'd had a few drinks and given them a number out. But I was getting frets down the phone. Um, but it wasn't like one. It was like five, six... And it didn't bother me that much. But I thought well, I'd you were still bit, answering. Yeah, so. I was still answering. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun with this. So I got match of the day on when I scored the goal. And I went, hold on, mate, one sec. Turn the volume up. I said, have a listen to this. <laughs> and played my goal in celebration <laughs> down the phone to him. Um, but yeah, I don't know how my number got out, but I love yeah, that. It was amazing. To get stick like that and score, especially when I don't score many, it was brilliant. Yeah, that's, that's one way of getting your revenge, isn't it? Yeah. Like scoring against them. Um, did you see Cristiano say that he nearly joined Arsenal? this week and yeah. then he played that game against Manchester United mm. and by all accounts the senior players said to Fergie you've got, you've got to sign him up you've got to sign yeah. him up was there ever a, a sliding doors moment for you? Um, I, I've had a couple I've I nearly signed for West Ham three times um, literally to the point of deadline days didn't just didn't happen the final, the final final hurdle but the main one that sticks out for me was leaving Aston Villa uh, in the January, I'd been speaking to Mick McCarthy at the Wolves at the time that was doing really well. And he said, look, you know, come to, to Wolves, you'll play. Uh, would love to have you. I was like, brilliant. OK, no problem. So they played Chelsea uh, on a Friday night game. They won 1-0. They was in on the Saturday for a recovery. So I've gone to watch the game at Molyneux, stayed over, was in the, dress, uh, was in the training ground the next day having my medical. Uh, all the players are coming in for their, uh, for their warm down. 
and I'm in the I'm in the dressing room. Uh, sorry, I'm in the medical room now with all their with the uh, Wolves kit on, going through all the tests, the knee tests, and the, and the pushes you got to do, and they're sort of having massages and the. How talking. long are the medicals? Are so oh, long, they drag they? on. They drag. <laughs> this this is a good reason why I did drag on. Though. All of a sudden, knock on the door. My agent's popped his head in. And he's sort of gone. Sid, need a word. So they've all started, oh, oh, what's hey. going on here? What's going on here? He's not so signing, he's signing, he's signing. So I've gone out and he's gone, look, Mark Hughes has been on the phone. Fulham, they, they want to sign you. So I've gone, look, I can't go down there and it doesn't happen. And then I've promised yeah. Mick, I said, let's go to your car and we'll speak. So we walked, literally snuck out the, the uh, training ground into his car, speaking to Mark Hughes. Yeah, Melissa, Mark, it's got, if I come down, I've got to get it done because obviously I've given... Make my word. Yep, listen, no worries. Get yourself down here. We'll get it all done tonight. All of a sudden, a massive shadow just appeared next to me on the driver's, uh, on the passenger side. And I heard again, oh my God. Of Big Mick. So I've undone the window about an inch. <laughs> just like that. Hello. And in his big voice, he's gone, is there a problem? Like and I've gone, yeah, I think there might be Mick. And he's gone, come on in, let's go and sort out that, man. Like and he just walked off. So we've come out, obviously got out of the car, walked in there and I've gone, look, Mick, I said, Fulham have come. I said, you know, it's back home for me. I said, I was having problems with uh, logistics with the family and stuff. And he said, if I could get you now and punch your fucking legs. <laughs> did you leg it? <laughs> no, he, he, be fair, he did say to me, look, I under, he goes, I understand where you're coming from because I think at the time his family uh, was, was, was down in London as well. But um, yeah, he chased us out. And I, I actually still think I walked, I, I ran out of that training ground, picked up my jeans that I still had, the Wolves, training kit on <laughs> driving down the M40 to uh, to Fulham's training ground to have the medical so you had the medical for Fulham having to change out of a Wolves I literally was changing kit. in the in the car <laughs> out, out this Wolves uh, training kit into obviously my own gear to go into Fulham what did you do with the Wolves training kit oh, you just left in the car and they, I don't <laughs> do know you reckon, but... reckon it happens a lot it doesn't <sighs> happen too much does it the, the funniest one was uh Odd and wingy when Harry's told him to come yeah. down. Yeah, no worries, Pete. <laughs> no worries, Pete. We'll get over the line. Just come down. Come down, but park up yeah. round the corner. Don't uh-huh. park up outside yeah. Loftus Road. <laughs> Harry's always been interested in signing me a little bit. To Has be honest. he? Yeah. But then, like, my dad's a Southampton fan and he was at Pompey at the time. There is no chance I could have gone. <laughs> <laughs> there is no chance I could have gone. Um, I think everything's gone quite smoothly for me, really, in moving clubs. There's only one thing that stands out for me I was at Chelsea when Ash was there so I've obviously second fiddle but I was still playing 25 30 games and Man City were interested and they couldn't get Ashley so they wanted the next best thing which apparently was me um, <laughs> but my agent was like do you want to go I said well I'm happy I'm playing games I would like to be first choice but we'll go and speak to the manager see what he says and it was Scolari at the time so I knock on the door go in yeah sit down not right, man. City have come in for me. Um, what, what do you think? And he just literally looked at me and went, "Are they offering you more money?" I went, "Yeah." He said, "We'll go then." <laughs> <laughs> I just walked out the room, right? Take the cash, you guys. Take the cash, and, yeah. and then yeah, was made up straight yeah. away. He just he wasn't really bothered. You know, if if he had said, "Oh no, I'd like to stay and stuff like that," then I would have had a decision to make. But yeah. he literally wasn't that bothered. So I walked out and like, I'll just go then. You want a bit them. from him, don't you? You want him at yeah, least to go, bit, we'll oh, miss I'd you. I'd like or... you to stay or... <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they didn't, the club were the same, to be honest. They were like, we'd love to keep you, yeah. and like, but you are second choice. And if you go, we, we're just going to get somewhere else. So it was a bit, it was a no-brainer for me, to be honest. Sort of like a conversation you have with a teammate. Let alone <laughs> not even a manager. I have you more money. Yeah, you've got to go. Yeah, you've got to go, mate. Bloody hell. It's the gaffer's gone, do Just go. Has anybody ever fought really hard to keep you? Gordon Strachan, probably, at Southampton. Um, I had to hand a transfer request and he said there's no chance you'll go into Chelsea he said I want you here he said you're still under contract you're not going anywhere so it was one of them you yeah. know I think if you had a transfer request in what does it do it doesn't really do anything does it no I don't think it's not worth the paper so, written on that you know my agents at the time who only had half of my career because I changed in them but they were like hand a transfer request I was like, well, what's the point like if, if they're going to let me go mm. they're going to let me go but to be honest I think the club Gordon Strachan would have kept me if he could but the club were just happy to take the money. Mm. I think Southampton have always been a selling club, so they were just happy to take the money and yeah, I was gone. Mm. But my biggest one was Reading. When I went from Reading to Chelsea, a lot of people say that I went to Chelsea purely for financial gains. Wasn't the script at all. Reading actually offered me more money to stay at Reading than what what my Chelsea contract was. 
And it, it happened very late. And I was, it, I was very fortunate that season because I knew I was going to leave on a free. I was 24, I was going to leave on a free. Uh, there'd been no compensation, anything like that. And Steve Copper, I had, had a good relationship with him away from football as well. And he said to me, that just keep me updated the whole time. Let me know what you're going to do, whether you're going to stay, go, or even if you're thinking of what clubs you're going to go to just for advice. Uh, and it got right to the end. Um, and, uh, and, and I sat down with Steve Copper and he was like, listen, you've got to go. He said, you can't turn that down. He said, obviously, we would, we'd, we'd love to keep you. I'm, I'm sure they'll come with a package to try and keep you. Uh, and they did right at the end, but I couldn't turn... Uh, I couldn't turn did you find it down. difficult leaving clubs if you were settled? Yeah, yeah, it was because you say you build that... You, you feel like that, a family. Yeah, you do. You do. Like I, found, I know it sounds stupid, but going to Chelsea, I found it difficult leaving. I think I even had tears. Mm. I don't know if any of you see me on telly, I do cry a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had tears leaving, to be honest, and I, I really wanted to stay. But I think in football, if you want to go on and win things, like at Chelsea, you know, you, Roman come in there buying a lot of players. I, I wanted to go and win trophies, but I do find it difficult to leave clubs because you get so settled. Yeah. Any regrets? No, not really. What's the point of no. regretting stuff? There's no point. Oh, no. Not no for regrets. me. No, no, not for me. We're nearly done. What have you got planned for the week? Uh, kids are still off school. Oh, no, I've been week. off for about <laughs> 10 weeks. I'm like, <laughs> you just can't wait to <laughs> boot them back in. Can't you? <laughs> yeah. they start causing Take them back to the school gate. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To be fair, my youngest is his first year, so I can't see that going too well, to be honest. Uh, I was starting school. Yeah, I did mm. say, if you're naughty, they send you home from school. And he went, I'll just be naughty then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go as I planned. <laughs> so. and that is it from Liquid Football on Joe, together with Paddy Power. We're here every week. You can download the podcast or you can watch us on YouTube. And please, do leave us a nice review on iTunes later on. We've also got a Facebook page. If you search for Liquid Football, you can join the chat on there. House of Rugby is out tomorrow with James Haskell and Mike Tyndall. And TKO is out on Thursday. We're back next week. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Liquid Football on Joe. Sponsored by Paddy Power.